Now before starting our object oriented programming journey in Python, let's discuss about what is the difference between the procedural programming and the object oriented programming. So you will have the better idea why we use object oriented programming. Now traditional programming languages such as C or Pascal were called procedural programming languages or structural programming languages where the basic unit was functions. Now programming in these type of procedural languages involves choosing a data structure and then designing the algorithm and then translating that algorithm into a code. So if this sounds a little bit confusing, let me try to explain it with an example. So let's say you have been given a task to create a program for a passenger who wants to travel from one place to the another place using a cab service. So if we think from the point of view of procedural programming, what we do in the procedural programming is we create some global data structure which holds the data. So here, for example, we create some kind of data structure which can hold the data. For example, in case of a cab service, uh, which cab service is it or which type of cab is it and at what location this cab is standing. All these kind of data we store in a data structure in a global environment. Now after storing the data, we design an algorithm. So let's see what kind of algorithm we can develop in the procedural programming language for our cab booking service. So this is a pseudo code which I have written. So first of all, the passenger will open the app from which he can book a cab and then he will book the cab and once the cab is booked, he will wait for the cab and then once cab arrives, he will sit in the cab and then he will reach to his or her destination and at the end, he will pay the fare of the cab. And this is the pseudo code of that algorithm and then we will translate this algorithm into actual code in procedural programming language. Now in these type of procedural programming languages, we concentrate on creating the functions and the major drawback of uh, using these functions is that data and operations on the data are separated. That means we need a methodology to send this data to these functions. So here we need to send this data which we have saved globally into these functions and these functions take this data either as argument or as a global variable and then perform some actions on this data and give you some result. Now these kind of functions are passive. What do I mean by passive here? That is these kind of function cannot hold any information inside them. So once you give the data, they are able to give you the result back after performing some operations, but they cannot save or hold the state or the data so that if you want to use that data in some other place in your code, then it will be very difficult using these kind of functions which you use in procedural programming. Now let's look at the object oriented approach of doing things. So in object oriented programming languages like C++ or Java or Python, the basic unit is class. Now if we take the same example of a passenger who wants to travel from one place to another using a cab service, using object oriented programming thinking, which depends upon the creation of object, we can create different kind of objects. For example, for a cab, we can create a class called cab and then we can create a class for cab driver and the third class we can create for a passenger. 
okay so a class you can create for any real life object it can be a car it can be a motorbike it can be a book or employee or a person so object oriented programming allows us to create object so first of all what is a class so a class refers to a blueprint in which we can have data and methods okay so for example for our cab class what attributes this cab class can have for example a cab service which cab service we want to take what is the make of the cab it is it a toyota or a bmw or a volkswagen cab at which location this cab is right now what is the number plate of that cab so the passenger can recognize this cab so all these things which i have written here are called data because they can hold some kind of data number plate has number plate data location have geolocation data make have the make data cab service can have a data like uber or any other cab service and the other thing which a class can have are called method so earlier we have seen that we can create functions and when these functions you use inside a class they are called method okay so functions inside a class are called method now the data inside this object or class is called attributes or the member variables which can hold some data and using this class we can create object of the cab class which means we can create different object using a same class and how to create object using classes we will see in the next video in the real life example so don't worry if you don't understand how these things works i will give you a real life example so you will be able to understand in a better way now what is an object an object is a software unit that combines data and methods okay so we have this data here and then we have the methods inside the class and object is able to combine both of them which is data with the methods now these objects for example a cab object and the passenger object can exchange the data between them also so data is interchangeable between for example the passenger object and a cab object so let's rewind once again what we have learned about object oriented programming so the basic unit in object oriented programming is a class and a class refers to a blueprint which can have the data and methods now using a class we can create objects and what is a object object is an instance of a class and each object can have its own data and method and an object is able to store the state of some kind so at which location this cab is right now so this is a state and an object is able to store that state now in procedural programming if you remember there is no relation between the data and the method right we need to provide the data to the method which are separate entities in the procedural programming language now these data members are called attributes or member variables and these functions which you define inside a class are called methods and what are some of the key differences between procedural programming language and object oriented programming language the first is the unit in procedural programming language is function and on the other hand in object oriented programming the unit is class the second is the procedural programming concentrate on creating functions while object oriented programming starts from isolating classes and then they can have data and methods inside it in procedural programming language the data and the functions are separate and in object oriented programming language data and methods are not separate they are the part of a single object of a class now if all this seems to be little confusing to you don't worry 
you are not alone and I will try to solve this confusion. So let's create a class in Python. So for that, I will create a new project. So let's create a new project in PyCharm. So just click on file here and then click on new project. And then the project name I'm going to give here is oops. And then I will just click on create and I will choose this option which says open in current window and also this option which is add to currently opened project which is going to create this project in this window itself which is already open. So now you can see we have a empty project here and inside this project let's create a python file so right click on the project and then new and then we are going to create a new file and let's create a class called car so I'm going to name the file name as car because we are going to create the car class now in order to create a class in python you use a keyword class and then you give the name to your class so the class name in our case is car and then you give this colon and for example I write here a keyword called pass now when you write this keyword after the declaration of a class this means that it is a empty class you can also use this pass keyword to create an empty method so this keyword pass is used to create an empty class or an empty method now here after the class declaration let's see how we can create an instance of a class so it's really easy to create an instance of a class so let's create a first object and i'm going to name it as ford which is a car brand and then you use your car class name and use these parentheses here okay so this here ford is an object or you can also say it's an instance of the class car in a similar way we can create multiple objects for example honda is another car brand and you can create the honda object using this class car once again you can create a new object for example audi and then you can once again use this uh, car class to create this object so what we have done till now we have created three object from the class car now in the previous video i told you that you can associate some data with your object so let's associate some data so for example ford we can associate a attribute called speed right so we can assign the speed for example 200 here for honda we can assign speed let's say 220 and for audi we can assign the speed let's say 250 so speed here is called the attribute and whenever you create an empty class using this pass keyword you can add these attributes on the fly so you can see we have added these attribute after the declaration of the class and after the creation of the objects let's add some more attribute to these instances or the objects so a car can have the color so i'm going to just write color and the ford has let's say the red color and let me just copy and paste here and let's say the honda have the blue color and we have the audi of black color so once again color is an attribute here now if you want to print these attribute you can use this print method and then for example we want to print the speed of ford and the color of ford then we can uh, do it like this and let's run the code so in order to run this code first of all when you create a new project and a new python file you need to right click on this file and then click on run the file name whatever is your file name my file name was car so you can see now the result is printed here first is the speed and second is the 
color of an instance Ford. Similarly, you can uh, print the color and speed of uh, Honda and Audi objects also. Now, if you want to change some attribute, it's also possible. So let's say I want to change the speed of Ford object. So I'm going to use Ford.speed once again. And this time I want to assign 300 speed to this attribute. Let's say we also want to change the color of uh, the Ford object. So I'm going to just use Ford.color. And this time I want to use the color blue here. And let's once again, uh, we will uh, try to print the color and speed of the object Ford. And now you can see this result. So before the speed was 200 and the new speed is 300 for the object Ford. And before the color was red and the new color is blue for this object Ford. Now, if you have followed the last video, this speed and color is the data. So speed and color are the variables which holds some data inside them. But still, we haven't added any behavior or methods to our class car. And that we will do in the next video. Now let's create a new class because uh, understanding classes in any language is difficult. So let me give you another example. So this time I'm going to create a new Python class and I'm going to name this Python class as a rectangle and then press OK, which is going to create this class. And to create a class, you already know, you use the keyword and the name of the class and then the colon and we will also make this class an empty class using this pass keyword. And in order to create an instance, I'm going to just uh, write uh, rect1, which is the first object using the rectangle class. And then I'm going to create rect2, which is the second object using this rectangle class. And now what are the attributes which we can relate to the rectangle. A rectangle have a width and the height. So let's add the width and height. So let me use the first object and let's say height is 20 for the rectangle one. And then we are going to use the second object. And once again, we are going to add the height for the second rectangle. Let's say the height of second rectangle is 30. Similarly, we can add the width to the rectangle. So width is equal to, let's say it's 40 and rect2 object have the width, let's say 10. So what we have done here, we have created a rectangle class and then we have created two instances of the rectangle class, rect1 and rect2, which are also called objects. And then we have added some attributes to our objects, which are height and width. Now let's say you want to calculate the area of these two rectangles. I can use the print method. And then what is the area of the rectangle? It's the multiplication of the height and the width, right? So I can use this uh, rectangle one object, and then I can uh, call the height and width of this object. And this will give me the area of the rectangle one using this multiplication operator. Similarly, I will do the same for the object two here. And let's run the code. And if you remember what we need to do, if we create a new Python file, we need to right click on the file and then click on run, right? So once the file is running, you can choose from here which file you want to run, but at least once you need to right click on the file and just click on run whatever file name you have. So you can see the area of rectangle one is 800 and the area of rectangle two is 300. So this is how you can create a very simple class in Python. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add behaviors to your class. That means how to add methods to your class and how to use this method to manipulate this data which we have provided here in the form of attributes. 
so stay tuned and please keep watching these videos and i will see you in the next video